Well, good morning, everyone. Hey, so glad to, to be on one more call. Uh, and, and Dave Neff, I'm so glad to be able to call you a friend. I think that's the real wealth of your life is, is just the, how many friends you have, the width and depth of friends. And, and what a great business. We think of width and depth when we're building the business, but uh, these are all people. And uh, the relationships that we gain, uh, it's just such a, such a joy, uh, good friends. And we're attracting good people. And uh, so glad that you're part of our family. And I, I don't know a lot about you, uh, just a few phone calls now and again. And but you've you've got quite a storied past of fascinating and an incredible Avini journey so far. You've you've done a lot of good, and so maybe just introduce yourself. How how are you, and where did all this come about to to make Dave Neff today? And, and oh, there you go. Started all okay. over again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, let's see. Where do I start? My goodness. Um, back in my twenties. Um, I was privileged to read a, a scientific study that kind of locked me into liking to read scientific studies, but this particular one marked my life from the standpoint of natural health. I wanted to take care of my body and, and try to remain healthy, and, and I kind of wanted to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that part didn't totally pan out, so... Um, I mean, I lifted weights and I ran. I became a, a runner, uh, been a runner all my life, and... Um, and so some things kind of transpired nicely, but what that, that uh, study did was it marked my life in such a way that I started getting involved with everything from herbs to homeopathic meds to vitamins and minerals and just trying to supplement my diet and eat right and try to get enough sleep. And that didn't always work out, but anyway, um, and do things like that. And, and over the years, it became such a, almost a fetish really, but anyway, um, and then people began to ask me, so what are you doing for this? And what are you doing for that? And, and I would kind of give them a little guidance and try to direct them. And, and then ultimately it turned into a business because uh, there were so many people that wanted help. Uh, siblings would call me, hey, what do I do for this? And I guess sometimes I would think to myself, well, if you'd listened to me 20 years ago, you wouldn't be here right now. But anyway, no. Um, no, I didn't say that. But anyway, um, there was a situation that came up involving uh, cardiovascular disease. And since that, as I studied more, uh, was the biggest killer, still is, um, I invested about $20,000 into some medical equipment, uh, a DPA system, digital pulse analyzer, which tests the cardiovascular system. And then I started flying all over the country and, and Canada testing people's cardiovascular systems. And typically I would go into either a doctor's office or a naturopathic doctor's office or a uh, chiropractor's office and, and, or they would invite me in and they would give me an exam room for, the, for a week. And at the beginning of the week, I would do a seminar for all their patients and teach them about the dangers of cardiovascular disease, the silent nature of it and how if you have issues transpire, sometimes it's too late and so on and so forth. And then I would teach them what my system would do, test them, and then guide them into taking care of the situation, uh, correcting the problem naturally or preventing the problem naturally if they looked pretty good. And so that, that took up uh, probably 50 years of my life. Um, and I'm just a youngster, so maybe we don't have to age ourselves. Anyway, all that said, um, um, then bringing it right up to date, um, one of my brothers began to suffer from a major, major disease about, I would, I'm guessing five, six, seven years ago. And, um, my brother, John, started a business called Family Home Pest Control in Portland, Oregon. And um, so needless to say, for the last 40 some years, he's been working with some pretty deadly toxins and um, developed a, a situation where rogue cells began to scatter throughout his bloodstream and so on and so forth. And, and he had some serious challenges. And lately, well, I'm just going to be frank. About four to five months ago, we thought we were going to bury him and literally put him in his casket. And uh, he got to the point where his talking was, you can't hear me. You know, I, I put my ear to his face and I couldn't hear what he was saying hardly. And 
And he reminded me in his appearance when I was helping him dress one day of, if you remember back to seeing pictures of some prisoners in Auschwitz. I mean, they just like, like nothing but bones covered with a layer of skin. And that's the way John looked down to 102 pounds and, or something like that. And, and it just, it was a challenge. And uh, he spent close to $100,000 trying to figure out how to solve this problem. Went down to the Gershom Clinic in, in Mexico, I think it was for about three weeks. That cost him $30,000, not counting his transportation and, and so on and so forth. And he tried everything he could think of and it didn't seem to be work. Nothing seemed to work. And then he finally went ahead and had chemotherapy. And if <laughs> that pretty much put him in the ground right there. And, and anyway, so on and so forth. And then I got this phone call from Sherry Knowles. And Sherry called me up and she said, Dave, this was last May. And right at the beginning of uh, the Avini situation. And uh, she called me up and she said, Dave, I just found out about something. You are going to want to know about this for your brother. Because she knew about my brother's situation. And um, I said, what is it? Tell me about it. Send me what you got. And uh, that started me on a scientific study reading spree. <laughs> And so I read uh, numerous numerous white papers and studies that were put out by Rick uh, Rick Deitch and and others in relationship to zeolite, its imperfections before it's perfected, and so on and so forth, and uh, what it's good for and what it can do, and then the scenario of Rick's amazing work at actually completely purifying it from all the heavy metals that it sort of magnetically attracts. I'm just going to use that term. It's not magnetic, but it attracts them almost like it's a magnet to them. And then um, the concept of his being able to discover a way to micronize it down to the size of about one tenth of a single red blood cell. And, it, and then um, the ability for it to get into our bodies and, and, and get throughout wherever the blood goes, because it's so small and start literally grabbing up those heavy metals and taking them out of our bodies. Well, that, that whole thing, I, as I studied it, I thought to myself, this, is, this sounds too good to be true. And you know, whenever that comes through my mind, I think, well, then it must be too good to be true. And then I stepped back and thought, wait a minute, I'm reading the actual scientific studies here. This is not some hearsay from some salesperson or some whatever, uh, or some social media comments or whatever. This is actual studies that are in the books uh, that are certified, so to speak, and uh, peer reviewed and so on. And, and that's when I stepped back and I thought, I got to check this out. I got to try. I got to see if this will work for John. And so uh, I called Sherry and I said, uh, hey, um, I need to try this out for my brother. How can I get it? You know, and she says, well, you can get it retail or wholesale. And I stopped right there <laughs> and I had to kind of grin to myself and say, uh, retail, that's kind of like a bad word. Um, how do I get it wholesale, please? Anyway, and so uh, she told me, well, you got to um, you got to sign up. I go, whoa, hold on. Red flags are popping up all over the place because I had previously been in nine network marketing companies, one of them for 20, almost 20 years. And um, the reason I was in those companies and with them, 99% was not to build a big business, but was to get natural products of various kinds and to be able to use them for some of the people that I was helping. And in all of those companies, take a little side here, all of those different companies, there was always a renewal fee each year. And there was this charge and a charge for the website and a charge for this and a charge for that. And I kept up with those because I needed the wholesale availability of these different products, some of which I found to be very, very useful for myself and others. Um, and the interesting part is I never found a situation where one company provided the best of everything. It was always, wow, they're really good at this one. This one over, this company over here is really good at that one, et cetera. And so I had to have connections and I had connections with about 41 com companies altogether. The rest of them were regular companies that made different natural things and so on. So long story shortened up a little bit. Um, 
I finally looked into it enough, into the Avini picture enough and heard from Sherry enough to realize that they didn't have any of these, as some have said, gotchas like other companies had. They didn't have an annual fee. They didn't have a charge for the website. They didn't have a charge for a, an app. I didn't even understand what those were all about at the time because I was just looking at the product for my brother. Will this save him? Will this help him? I don't know. And then I started reading some testimonials that Sherry had provided. And I read about uh, Marcy Littlejohn's episode and how she coined the Marcy dose, so to speak, and so on and so forth. And I got all these things anyway, ended up buying about a thousand bucks worth of product and raced 50 miles up to my brothers and, and said, John, and I didn't have time to teach him a, a seminar and all that kind of stuff. And, and he wasn't in a position where he could really understand everything or anything like that, but he did in due time begin to use it. And every so often he would, it was interesting because I came up to visit him about a month later and I uh, was sitting at his desk, which surprised me because, uh, you know, after me helping him get into bed and all this kind of stuff and being hooked up to oxygen 24 seven and things like that, he suddenly um, it was in his office. I went over and his son said, yeah, he's back in the office. And so his son took me back there. And John, when he whispered in his ear, whispered in John's ear that I was there to see him, um, I saw him reach into his pocket very, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyway, very gently. And he pulled out a bottle of the cell defender. He, he, he thought I didn't see it. And he set it on his desk by his computer keyboard right in front of him. And, um, and then uh, I asked him a couple of questions and whatnot. I guess he figured I was going to ask him if he was using it or something, but, and then he looks at his watch and he picks it up and he puts them in his mouth and it's like, Okay, I guess I don't need to ask him if he's doing that. <laughs> anyway, he uses his watch that buzzes him every hour and he pulls it out of his pocket and he puts his dose in every day, all the time. And the interesting part is if he wakes up at night, he grabs it off this side table there and he puts some more in and drinks more water and so on and so forth. All right, that aside, in four months' time, John went from about four months time, John went from ready to be put into his casket to literally going bowling. <laughs> it's just like, what is going on here? It was so amazing. It's just such a, um, an emotional uh, roller coaster ride, you know? And um, I mean, it, as far as I'm concerned, it was a blessing from the Lord for this to come into our lives. And it became the tool that God allowed John's change to take place, through which God allowed John's take, change to take place. Well, what was interesting to me is that just the other day, John told me about a situation, then I found out about it also from his friends. He had called about four months ago, five months ago, he had called this couple that were me members of his church or whatever, or, or whatever, really good friends of him, of his, and he had called them to say goodbye from this earth. He literally, it was an emotional time for them and he was saying goodbye and whatnot. And, and then just the other day, fast forward, he's at Costco and these people were sitting over eating some food and the wife saw him and her eyes just whoop, you know, and she's going, and she ran, ran over to him. John didn't see her coming, gives her a, him a big bear hug. He has no idea who's hugging him yet. <laughs> and then backs off. Of, what is going on? You said goodbye. You're what? Anyway, so he tells them about it. And they were at our house the other night until 11 o'clock chatting and, and being really excited about this. And, and now they're talking to all kinds. Anyway, it just is an interesting story at how coming all the way from my 20s to now, and through all those years, my focus was on what kind of supplements can I use to help this problem or that problem? What can I put into my body or this body of this person to help them get well from this or that or the other thing? When all of a sudden now, it's what can I put in to take something out? It's just a completely different picture. Now, yes, I had looked at things that took bad things out of the body, but they all, all of the procedures typically cost lots of money. And secondly, took good things out too. 
And now all of a sudden I'm faced with this little tiny squeeze bottle <laughs> and it takes bad things out and doesn't disturb the good things. And there's no contraindications to any other vitamins, minerals, or whatever I'm taking and no medicines. If I happen to be on some medicines or whatever, it's like, how can this be? And yet here's John, a living example in my own family of what took place. Now, I didn't rest there. I saw Marcy's testimonial. I saw your testimonial, Dave. I saw all kinds of testimonials of some major, major diseases where people were at stage four, if you will, on different things and um, all kinds of other things. And people were getting well. I'm going, wow, what is going on? This is so different. Anyway, that's hopefully I sort of brought myself up to date now. <laughs> well, that, that's just incredible. And I, I just love what you're saying. And Oh goodness, there's there's just no better feeling than feeling like you you made a positive difference. And I, I I'm reflecting back. Uh, this is probably 25 years ago. I'm with another company that has powerful products that make a difference, and and we're uh, gathering. There's quite a few of us, and the guy on the stage. Uh, uh, we're kind of having a testimony meeting, and this one lady. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was that, but but it was profound. It, it was it was you know life changing, and everybody was really moved by that. And the MC on the stage uh, just says, "Hey, uh, who shared this with you?" And she mentioned the name and says, "Is, is that person in in the audience?" And uh, can you stand up and says, "How does that make you feel hearing that?" And of course mighty good <laughs> yeah. uh, and, but then he, he didn't leave it alone he says who who shared this business with you and he mentions a name are they in the audience and anyway uh, that that continued uh, several points and and it just happened that a lot of those people were in the audience and and her was this person that uh, was part of that chain th those essential links that uh, that connected that person that had that experience and uh and they and they hadn't heard of it, and, and of course, how does that make you feel just hearing that story and that you were part of the link in in that chain? Absolutely. Well, and, yeah, and then, of course, I was part of that link too, and that made me feel really good. And and that that's such an amazing idea that ripple effect of of uh, uh, just a, a wonderful, I, I would say, even inescapable thing that we do. We all have influence on other people, but. But where you're in a company where that's the prime directive, we're actually purposely going out and trying to make a positive difference in, in impacting people with, uh, I think, the most important product that there is. What a what a scientific breakthrough that we have that can can really change stuff. So absolutely, uh, what, so, what a big deal. So so let me let me throw something in here on that subject because uh, when Sherry first talked to me. And she got into the fact that, yeah, you got to sign up to get it wholesale and things like that. And I, I started saying, Sherry, hold on. I told her point blank. I'm not looking for another business. I do not want another business. I'm trying to be retired, not just tired here. Anyway, but so we, we got through that and she assured me there's no requirements at all. You buy one of these packages and you can be wholesale authorized for life, period. End of story. So when I looked into it a little further, I couldn't find any red flags. And so then starting in by just wanting to help my brother, that was the focus. That was my sole purpose. I wasn't getting into a business. I wasn't looking to build another business or anything. And so on that basis, when my brother started having good results, needless to say, I'll underscore one more time, it was amazing. But then as he had results, and then I had some results with my hands that were injured when I was in the Vietnam War zone, um, had some dramatic results where I couldn't use my hands very well. And because of the uh, new discovery, basically, that Rick came up with in relationship to plus relief, it's called, I used that on my hands, sprayed some in my mouth at the same time. And in 15 minutes, I could punch a punching bag. It just like, whoa. They're working again. There's no pain. Now, somebody did ask me, did the pain come back? And I said, yes, in about five hours. And then I was coached to put it on again. 
So I did. Then it came back in about 12 hours. And I went through that process until about 30 days between any pain coming back. It just became an amazing thing. That said, I have a separated shoulder and I have some knee injuries. And those things, the separated shoulder took me about two full days. So understand that it doesn't always happen in 15 minutes like it did with my hands. But it took me two full days of putting ointment on the shoulder and spraying in my mouth each time and every three hours during my waking time, two full days. And then for my knees, it took me five full days to do that. But it went away and I could run again. That was amazing to me. Now, backing up from that, when I told Sherry I didn't want a business, I had no choice in my heart but to share what happened to my brother with several other people I knew that were in a similar scenario. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I owed it to them to say something, you know? So I guess without knowing it, I became a natural health ambassador. It was, that's just the way it was. I started sharing these things that were happening and I was only sharing them because I thought maybe there's a chance they could get well too. That's, it was pure and simple, just that. So I shared with this person, shared with that person and some of them got well, they started sharing with other people. And I got several months along, in fact, at the end of the year, I still didn't know anything about the compensation plan, really. And it still wasn't a business in my mind. It was a way to help people. And then at the end of the year, I get a 1099 that shows 10,000 plus dollars. And I'm going, wait a minute. I've just been helping these people. And where did this come from? <laughs> that type of thing. And it, suddenly I realized, wait a minute. This company is rewarding people for sharing their testimonies with others and seeking to help others. And I thought, I do have a business. And it's a business that's based on really, really upstanding principles and on the concept of helping people get well, not on the concept of how quick can I get rich? No, it wasn't that at all. So I just kept going and doing that same thing. And then before I knew it, people started saying, Dave, um, I have five friends that are absolutely hurting in this way or that way. And they're willing to come to my house. Could you come and just explain some of this to help them? get on a right track. And so I would go do this meeting. And the next thing you know, some of them had 20 people at their house. And, and this just started cascading. <laughs> and um, next thing you know, I'm traveling six hours away to do a meeting there. And next thing you know, my brother says, hey, uh, I got four meetings scheduled. Can you come and just do these? And, and on and on that went. And really, it was nothing more than purely sharing some good health with people some ideas, some, what can I call it? Some brand new scientific discoveries that are, were unheard of. And so that leads me to a little thing that really became pertinent to me. And that was the use of the word product or products. Um, when my brother called me from, one of my brothers called me from the, uh, by the Canadian border and asked me to come up and do a series of meetings. He said, hey, Dave, listen to me. Uh, there's a lot of Dutch people in the community and people, a lot of these people have been in network marketing things and they've been burned by them. He said, they are anti-network marketing like you can't believe. He said, please don't use that word. <laughs> I'm going, okay, great. So I revise my slides and try to make sure they're just focused on science and product and testimonials. And, and then, but I had to say something about the fact that these three gentlemen that founded the business um, had such good focus on helping people and a clean focus on a business aspect. I had to say something about how do these products get to people? Are they in the stores? No. Um, what do we do? Are they mail order? Not really. No. Uh, anyway, so I had to get to the point of distributor. And in one meeting, somebody said, oh, so is this a network marketing thing? You know, now we're, okay, I'm looking at Steve and I'm looking at the people and, and I, okay, I got to do something here. Okay, so then I talked about how different it was and so on, but here's what really happened for me. And I've been teaching this to my wife and she's really taken it up and, and to other people. And that is 
don't use, I say, generally speaking, don't use the word product or products, because as soon as I use that, I say, oh, wow, I've got this new product that, oh, so you're in the network marketing company, aren't you? It's like it just ties it in. So now we say something to the effect of, oh, well, you know what? My wife will say something like, Dave got connected with this scientist that's been working on a new concept for 25 plus years. And he's finally perfected a couple of things. These scientific discoveries are amazing. And they've basically been instrumental in saving Dave's brother's life. And I, I'll have to have Dave tell you about it because I don't know the details. And bam, it's wide open. I can share the product without saying product. I can share the details of this scientific discovery and what it's done, what it's doing for different people and how unique it is in terms of it being a zeolite. And some people have heard of the zeolite and some people haven't. And so I go into the fact that it's a volcanic rock and when it explodes, et cetera, et cetera. And I talk about it and I talk about the details of how it's almost magnetic to heavy metals. It's not magnetic, don't get me wrong, but it attracts them so powerfully. The only problem is it attracts them out of the earth too and out of the air. And so it's full and it's really semi-useless to the human body until Rick Deitch came up with a concept, 25 years of working, but a concept where he could purify it fully. So then when I explain that and I talk about micronization and talk about how now it's just in a little bit of water and you put it in your mouth and you drink plenty of water at the same, you know, similarly and work it through and it attracts the heavy metals out of your body. And now we're finding that when you take the heavy metals and toxins and other junk out of the body, the body begins to heal and fix itself like it was naturally designed to do. And so we're seeing major diseases and other types of ailments starting to disappear just by taking the junk out. Anyway, so that little thing about products as opposed to scientific discoveries, uh, it, it has made all the difference. People are, are getting contacts and people are listening better and not jumping to the conclusion, oops, it's another one of those things, you know. Um, it's, it's been a, a real help. Yeah, that just one little tiny thing that's been very, very helpful to us. Anyway, so I thought I'd share that. Oh, I appreciate that. that. That's powerful. Uh, a, a lot of people get in and they don't succeed. And I, I look at it, you know, success leaves clues and successful people do certain things and unsuccessful people do certain things or, or probably more accurate, they, they don't do <laughs> things. <laughs> right. and, and so much of it is just do. Uh, it, it really is all about action and, and the proper activity and, and then consistency over time. Uh, maybe, maybe Talk a little bit about that because you've you've been uh, very very successful in other other ventures. Uh, uh, you you must have done pretty good having again and again these different companies, not just for the product, but you you've built teams before. Have you have you got any tips on on that? Because if you really care about helping people, that the multiplying effect of uh, finding three people, teaching them to do the same thing, and and the structure is so cooperative where uh, you you. You can only sponsor three people personally, but you can continue to sponsor people and uh, everybody's winning. And it, it, it's just the most elegant system I've, I've ever seen. I've, I've been doing this for, uh, April is gonna be my 47th anniversary in network marketing. <laughs> so, but been around a, a little bit like, like you, but uh, you know, it, it's just such a, it really is a recipe uh, you identify uh, the the right activities and do them it, it just becomes a certainty if if you do that if you have a product like this where everybody needs it nobody has it and it's just in a really growth environment right now i, I just think wow uh unsurpassed a uh, product or un, unsurpassed scientific breakthrough <laughs> Perfect you know, right, right there great leadership uh yeah uh, talk about uh, the recipe for success for by dave neff <laughs> uh, <laughs> well i think you're hitting the nail on the head from the standpoint of the foundational principle and that is we really do have a product that is new and amazingly needed right now i mean think back i, I was just talking about this with somebody the other day think back 200 years. Well, I can't think that far back because I'm not that old, but I can imagine back 200 years or back at least into the pioneer days and whatnot. We didn't have 
the smoke and the, you know, we have tremendous conveniences now, tremendous conveniences, and they're great. But we also have heavy metals in the air, in the water, in our foods, etc., like never before. And if we can understand that foundational principle that we are in a dirty world and we can only do limited things to clean it up in a reasonable way, um, bottom line is we can take a shower each morning for the outside of the body, but now we're able to take a shower for the inside too, unlike ever before. So to me, that's the, that's the foundational piece. The dirtiness that we live in, and now we have a tool to help our bodies clean up and so effectively that they begin working better and be, begin working, uh, fixing themselves, if you will. Um, so now that said, how do we share this? I don't look at it as a big, oh, I got to figure out how to share this. No, just have a heart for what other people are going through, number one, and be aware of what's happening. Um, be, don't be afraid to ask questions. Oh, wow. What happened to your leg? Oh, wow. Are you okay? You know, and, and then to me, there's a key principle after that. You ask a question and wait for an answer and then listen and listen and listen. We have two ears, one mouth. We should be listening at least twice as much as we speak. The challenge is we tend to feel better talking. We yap too much. <laughs> I'm one of those, and I have to constantly work on that. So it's interesting because in the corporate world, I had a job that I really loved, and I worked for a major telecommunications corporation. And my job as senior corporate trainer was to, in the, I was assigned the Western half of the United States, and I was to train trainers for that company. And these trainers then were to teach new employees how to deal with people on the phone, in person, et cetera. And so one of, my, one of the courses I taught um, exclusively was called Exquisite Customer Service. What does it really look like? What does it take to serve someone else with a real, real heartfelt service? And um, so I would sit down with them. This was a telecommunications company. And I would sit down with them when... Uh, I mean, after I taught the trainers, I was done teaching trainers. Um, I traveled from uh, Portland to say, to Seattle, to Salt Lake City, to Denver, to Phoenix, et cetera. Went to all of their centers and trained trainers for them. When all the trainers were in place, then I started a project and began teaching the individual new people in order to help the trainers understand a couple of principles. So I would sit down with a person on the phone and I would have my earpiece on. I'd close my mic and I would listen to that new um, um, employee handle a problem that a person called in with. And sometimes the person is madder than a hornet. Sometimes they're nice, but they're challenged. And so then when we got done with the call, I would uh, flip the switch so they wouldn't get another call temporarily. And I'd say, okay, tell me something. Think about that whole call you just did. Tell me if you think it completely through what did you really do well in that call? And their first reaction is, oh, I blew this. No, no, no. What did you do well? I want them to focus on what they really did well. And there's, I'm coming to something here with our business. Um, and when they start naming a couple things off, then I'll, I'll talk about a few things as well and talk about what they did good and I thought was really outstanding. And then we stop and I say, okay, think about that call one more time. Think it all the way through. What would you do differently? Not would you blow, would you mess up on? What would you do differently if you had it to do all over again? And they start saying things like, well, you know, I would do thus and so. And this, the things they came up with in their very next call, they did them because they self-discovered what they needed to change. So I'm trying to use that kind of a principle as I'm teaching people. It's, it's not easy necessarily, but it's a good thing to try to, what did you do when you worked with that person? What did you do really well? And if you had it to do again, what would you do differently? And when they self-discover, bingo, they start doing it with the next person that they work with. So that principle has been a little bit of a guiding thing um, just to help people from the heart share with others, number one. 
So to be kind, to be courteous, to be have a smile on their face, which I hardly do often enough. But anyway, I'm so in, intent on what I'm trying to do. It's like, whoa, I'll laugh about it once in a while. Um, anyway, so then what I found out was that if I share with a person, I'm trying to share from the heart how these products help other people, teach them a little bit of the science, not get too deep unless they're very scientifically minded, um, and then provide some things for them. If they want to go deeper, I'll provide the white papers, make sure they know where they are and things like that, and then help them by demonstrating how to do it. So for instance, they say, oh my, you know what? I've got a sister that's got this problem. I would love to share this with her. Bingo! There's the prospect. And, and we, I don't necessarily call them a prospect, but there's their first trial, if you will. There's their first challenge. And so I said, so how do you, what's the best way you think you should share with them? And they talk about this idea, that idea. And I said, well, how about if we just call them? And maybe you say something about, oh, I just ran into this new discovery and introduce the idea. And then say, I don't know the details about it, but I know somebody who knows a lot about it. And so let me connect him in. And so we do a three-way call. Or secondarily, we just, they say, wow, I'd like to hear more about it. So I teach them how to use their app to send a little, um, uh, little tiny five-minute video or four-minute video or whatever over to kind of introduce the way and then ultimately end up with a three-way call if they need it. And then from there, it became a situation where they had so many coming out of the woodwork, so to speak, that they needed to, and wanted to share with. They said, oh, is there any way we could show all these people at once? I mean, could, would you come over and, you know, do a meeting? And I'm, they didn't say that term, but you, could you come over and share with these people? And if I got them together and that's doing meetings. And so we started doing meetings and, and passing the word and so on. And now, you know, some people might think, well, doing a meeting, I, I've never talked in front of people or whatever. Just have your sponsor come and do it or somebody else in your sponsor's, your sponsor's sponsor or something. Ask them if they would help you and get started. And then if you want, I'll give you a copy of my slides if you want to use them and you can, I'll help you change them around if you want a little bit. And, and then let's just do it. And I'll come and I'll listen and you can have me say part of it or whatever. We'll just work as a team. Ah, a team. There we are again. So the teamwork becomes really, really, really outstanding. And, and people learn one step at a time. Um, I don't know at all. I'm still, I, I just called Chip the other night and did a three-way call because I wanted some of his expertise in relationship to something that was going on. And this is the way we do it. We work together as a team, share this new discovery teach people what it's like, teach people how to use it, teach people how to share it with others. We hardly have to teach that because they are in their heart's heart, in their heart of hearts, they want to do that once they understand it and then help them do that. What can I say? <laughs> I hope it makes a little sense. That's very, very good stuff. I, I love just kind of keeping in the basics and and, and listening to you uh, and, and the interaction with customer service and stuff like that uh, just reminds me of a book, the title, Listening for Success. And, and so much of it is, is all about that. But uh, hey, and, any, any final thoughts or what, what do you think about the future uh, with, with this company? Uh, I, 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 I think, think uh, <laughs> well, I think that the future of this company, uh, uh, as God gives us more time, it's a, an amazing future. And I really believe that if we look at the compensation plan and you see those different levels like Emerald Next and then Diamond and so on and so forth, those are distinctly possible as we just continue to share and help others. It'll just come to pass. I mean, it's like the shock of here's a, here's a, an indicate here's here's a thousand bucks that come in my back office way early on and and i didn't even know what the back office was hardly but and then here's a couple thousand and then here's three thousand and here's it just keeps growing and all i'm doing is going out to share i'm not trying to drill in and and make a business happen um indirectly i am but at the same time i mean i've grown into that but at the same time i i keep taking myself back look in the mirror and say are you sharing this 
with people to help them or are you just trying to make money? No, I don't want the make money thing. I'll take it, of course. And actually, the more money I make, the more funds I have to help others in other ways too. But right now, it's just keeping the focus on sharing this life-giving, um, physiological life-giving gem that's been discovered, combination of gems that's been discovered um, with other people and teaching them to share it as well. And then one more thing. I had somebody recently respond to me and say, eh, yeah, I don't think it's for me. And I thought, wait a minute. How can you say, uh, whoops, my wife's reminding me. Hold on, hold on. You shared it. They're not ready. Next. We need to continually just move on. And don't move on with distaste or bitterness or even a negative feeling. But the bottom line is they're just not ready yet. It's okay. One day, maybe they'll be ready and they'll come and say, what was that stuff you were trying to tell me about? And then the doors open. So just move on to the next one. Help somebody else that is ready. Keep talking. <laughs> and appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're in a very good place right now. And coming home from the convention, just reminding me one more time, looking around at the, our, our culture, our, our club that we belong to, and, and our, our ultimate upline, uh, Rick, Neil, Doug, uh, uh, just what they were saying and doing. Uh, you, you could just feel that uh, they're very moved. And, and just kind of the story I shared, you know, where they, they hear the miracle uh, that that's that's what we really get paid for is that uh, that spiritual income uh, you get a psychological paycheck with this company that 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 that's that's why we really do it and there you go wow i, I will say i am deeply thankful to rick to, to our founders bottom line mm -hmm. um it, it's a, it was a joy to be there in las vegas and i'm looking forward to to dallas and um I, that was a delight. It was just a delight. So uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think I think we ought to go for it. So so let's let's do this. <laughs> absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Right. Thank you. Take absolutely. care, everybody. <laughs>